Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna have a look at graph transformations. Now we're gonna have a look at this question. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and we're gonna have a look at um, the ways that we can approach these questions. Now what I'm not gonna do in this video is I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the why it happens uh, the way it does when we're looking at graph transformations here. Uh, we could probably spend about two to three hours actually looking at that because uh, it is quite complicated in the way that we have to draw it. So what I am gonna have actually go about is just showing you how to answer questions like this in a nice, clear and easy way, hopefully, for you. Okay, so um, it, this question says the diagram shows part of a curve with equation y equals f of x. Okay, so it's the function of x. We don't know what the equation of the curve is. That f of x, the function of x just means with a particular equation, okay? So it says the maximum point of the curve has the coordinates 2, 3. Write down the coordinates of the maximum point with the equation, and we're going to discuss some of these different types of equations. Okay, but this is typically how a question would be phrased. Now we can see on the diagram there the maximum point being that this point here. If I draw on that, there we go. This point here does actually have the maximum point two three. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, but what we're going to have a look at is how we could approach different questions here. So when we change the function, we can do things either to the x coordinate or the y coordinate or a combination of the two. And the way that we do that is by placing the numbers within this f of x, y equals f of x. And we can either place numbers or, or symbols next to the x or outside of the bracket there, outside of the x. Okay, and there's a simple little set of instructions that you can remember for how it actually moves the coordinates. So either we're going to put things next to the x, and when I say things next to the x, I mean we can do the function of, and we could do x, and we could put a plus 2 in there next to the x. Okay, so that's one option of something we could have a look at. Hopefully you've obviously seen these before. So either we're going to put things next to the x, or we're going to put things outside of the x, which is going to affect the y coordinate. So if it is next to the x, or inside the bracket, okay, it's going to do the opposite of what we'd expect. Okay, so it's going to do the opposite, and we'll discuss that in a sec. Okay, it's going to do the opposite. And if it's outside of the brackets and it affects the y, it does what we'd expect. Okay, what you expect. Okay, so if it affects the x, it's inside the bracket. So we'll put inside bracket. And if it affects the y, it's when it's outside the bracket. There we go. So if we can remember this, this little set of instructions here, it's gonna help us to answer pretty much all the questions on this. So if it's next to the x inside the bracket, it does the opposite. And if it's outside the bracket, it affects the y and does what you expect. So something like this up here, which I've drawn already, f of x plus two, plus two there is inside the bracket. Okay, so it affects the x coordinate and it does the opposite of what we'd expect. So rather than adding 2 to the x coordinate, it subtracts 2 from the x coordinate. So this one in particular, and again we're going to have a look at all these different types of questions, but this coordinate here, the x coordinate there is 2. So if I was to do this function of x plus 2 here, we would subtract 2 from the x coordinate. So 2 take away 2 would give us 0, and the y coordinate wouldn't change, it would be a 3. Okay, now the only scenario where this doesn't actually follow the opposite and what you'd expect scenario is when it's a minus that we put in there, which we're gonna have a look at in a sec. The minus just follows and it does what you'd expect no matter whether it's inside or outside the bracket, but we're gonna have a look at some of these now. Okay, but a simple little set of instructions there to remember and to write down if it affects the x coordinate, um, it's inside the bracket and it does the opposite of what you'd expect. And when we're looking at the y coordinate, that's outside the bracket and it does what you'd expect, okay? So inside the bracket, opposite x, outside the bracket, what you'd expect and affects y. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these. Okay, so same question that we were just looking at, but we've got some questions here that we're gonna have a look at um, actually answering here. So it says the diagram shows them the uh, part of the curve with the equation y equals f of x, and here it is in the diagram. The maximum point of the curve is 2, 3, as we've already seen. Write down the coordinates of the maximum point with these different equations, and I've got quite a lot here, all the different scenarios we could actually have a look at. So for part a there, okay, it says f of x minus 2. So that's inside the bracket, so it affects the x coordinate, and it does the opposite of what we'd expect, so it doesn't subtract 2, it adds 2. Okay, so it just does the opposite. So the x coordinate being 2 there, we would add 2 to the x coordinate and that would make it 4. And the y coordinate's not going to change, so that would stay as 3. Okay, so that's the opposite of what we'd expect and we add 2 to the x coordinate. Look at the next one. Let's try to change to a different colour here. Right, so f of x minus 1. 
Now that minus one is outside of the bracket, so it's outside the bracket, it affects y, and it does exactly what we'd expect. So minus one, we would expect that to subtract one from the y coordinate, which it does, it just changes the y-intercept actually. If you're familiar with your equations of lines and your coordinates, um, coordinate geometry, you should hopefully know that number at the end is the, y, the y-intercept there. So it's taken away one from the y-intercept, essentially just moving the graph down one, but we'll have a look at that again a little bit later. But minusing one from the y-coordinate, the y-coordinate currently is three. So if we take one away from that, the x-coordinate doesn't change, so two, but the y-coordinate's also gonna drop down there to two, it's gonna subtract one from that. Okay, so that's how we could have different scenarios there with just adding and subtracting numbers and how that affects the x and y-coordinate. Now we're gonna have a look at question C, part C there. So y equals f of two x. So two times x, normally when you're timesing by two, you'd expect that to double something, but as it's inside the bracket affecting x, it does the opposite. So rather than multiplying by two, it divides it by two or halves it there. So if we look at the x coordinate, the x coordinate is currently two. So half of that, halving it, because it's inside the bracket, changing the x coordinate, but does the opposite. So half of two is one, and the y coordinate remains unchanged, and that remains as three. There we go. So that's that one. Let's have a look at the other scenario where it's outside the bracket. So three lots of f of x for part d here. Let's have a look at what this does. So it's outside the bracket. It affects y. We're multiplying it by three. So it does what we'd expect. It makes it three times bigger, but it affects the y coordinate this time because it's outside the x bracket. So three lots of that y coordinate. The y coordinate is currently three. So the x coordinate is unchanged and the y coordinate gets multiplied by three and becomes nine. Right, there we go. So that is our scenarios where we are multiplying by a number. So in terms of the x there, inside the bracket, 2x does the opposite, so divided by two. But outside the bracket, it multiplied the y coordinate by three. Okay, and onto these negative ones here, which don't really follow the same trend, but partly it does, so we'll have a look at this one here. So when we've got minus x in there, now it doesn't do the opposite of what we'd expect, because the opposite of minus x would just be nothing, okay? We wouldn't actually change anything at all, it'd just be positive x, it'd be the same equation, okay? But we follow the rest of the rules for this one, it's just that it goes a little bit out the window when we look at our minuses here. So when we've got a minus in there, all that that does is it swaps the symbol of the x-coordinate. It's still affecting x, it's inside the bracket, it just doesn't do the opposite this time, okay? So it just changes the, the uh, two as the x-coordinate to minus two. So the x-coordinate's gonna change, it becomes minus two, and the y-coordinate remains unchanged, stays as three. Okay, so this one is a negative in there. That's the only scenario where it doesn't actually do the opposite or anything like that. We just have to worry about, is it next to the x or is it changing the y? And it just flips the sign. So the last one here, we've got y equals minus f of x. And again, the minus there is outside the bracket, so it changes the y-coordinate. And again, it just swaps the sign. So instead of being positive three there as the y-coordinate, it's gonna be negative three. So we have positive two still and negative three. Okay, so again, just following all those little rules, is it next to X or is it next to the Y or outside of the X bracket? And that tells us which coordinate it affects. When it comes to adding, subtracting, multiplying, okay, we can think about the opposite or the, whether it does what we'd expect. The only scenario where it doesn't is where we've got this little minus symbol in there and that just changes the, the positive or negative symbol of the, the uh, corresponding coordinate, whether it's X or Y, whether it's inside the bracket or outside the bracket. Okay, let's have a look at one more. Okay, so onto a different question. We've got the diagram shows part of the curve with equation y equals f of x, and it says the minimum point of the curve has the coordinates three minus four. We can see that down here on the diagram. It then says write down the coordinates of the minimum point with the equation, and again, we've got, again, we've got three equations here. Now you've probably noticed there's a lot more going on in these. So we've got f of x minus two, and then plus three at the end. Now we've got two transformations essentially, or two things happening here. We'll look at why it's a transformation in a sec, how it moves. Obviously a transformation just being how a graph moves around. So we're gonna have a look at what this does. So in here, we've got f of x minus two. So we've got something happening here, and we've got something happening here as well. Now, one is inside the bracket, one's outside. So this means the x and the y coordinate is gonna change. But again, we're just gonna follow our little simple rules and do it step by step. So if I first start with this minus two in the bracket, that affects the x coordinate. So the x coordinate's currently three, and that does the opposite of what we'd expect. So we're not gonna take away two from the x coordinate, we're gonna add two. So adding two to that x coordinate, three plus two gives us five for the first coordinate there. And that's that first bit dealt with. We've then got the plus three at the end, and when it's outside the bracket, it affects the y coordinate, and it does what we'd expect, so it adds three to the y coordinate. So negative four, add three, 
gives us negative one. And there is our coordinate there with those two transformations, okay? So it is, if you think about what that actually does, it moves it right by two spaces. The three moves across to five, and then it goes up three places as well. So if you think about what this is gonna look like, it's gonna move right and up, so it's gonna be over here somewhere, that new minimum point, okay? But let's have a look uh, what this does. If we could draw a little sketch in, okay? It would look something like this. And there you go, that's what that transformation would do. Let's have a look at another one. So we've got the part B, it says f of minus x and then minus one at the end. So the minus x part, that's gonna swap the symbol on the x coordinate. So the current three is gonna become negative three, changing it from positive to negative. Again, not worrying about doing the opposite there when it's just a minus symbol. And then we've got the minus one at the end, which affects the y coordinate. And it does what we'd expect. It drops it by one, so it goes from minus four, which it currently is, down to minus five. And again, I'm doing all these questions separate from one another as if they were separate questions. So we're not going from one graph to the other. We're starting from that original graph. So I was again looking at the three minus four, not the new minimum point that we created on the question on part A there. So minus three, minus five being our second one. And again, we'll have a look at what that actually looks like with the minus symbol there. It's a little bit more complicated for me to sketch it out on this one for you, but we will have a look at some uh, sketching in a sec. So bear with me on that one. And onto the last one here, we've got um, y equals minus f of 2x. Okay, so this one just here. So the minus on the outside affects the y coordinate. And again, it flips the symbol. So if we're doing that bit first, let's have a think. Leave a little empty gap for that one there. So the y coordinate is gonna change symbols. So it's gonna go from minus four to positive four. Then look at the two x, that's inside the bracket. So it is the opposite of what we'd expect. So instead of timesing the x coordinate by two, it's gonna divide it by two. And the current x coordinate is three. So dividing that by two is not gonna give us a whole number there. It's gonna give us 1.5. There we go. And we can have decimal coordinates as well. That's absolutely fine. It's fine. It's just halfway between one and two, isn't it? So 1.5 being our x coordinate. Okay, so that is how our transformations are going to work. So just remember that little table. If it's inside the bracket, it affects x and it does the opposite of what you'd expect. And if it's outside the bracket, it affects the y coordinate and it does logically what you'd expect there. The only scenario where it doesn't is obviously with the minus symbol. And again, that's only when it's inside the bracket. It just does what you'd expect there. It just doesn't do the opposite. Okay, so here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so quite a few questions on this. You've got two questions, one on the left, one on the right, and four parts on each question. Three parts that are doing single transformations or single movements, and then you've got the part D on both where it's doing two transformations for those two. So you've got the minimum points on each one, you've got the maximum point on the first one, you've got a minimum point on the first one, they're the coordinates that you need to change. So have a read through, pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so looking at the first one. So part A for this one divides the x-coordinate by two, so we would have two, five, the opposite of what you'd expect there, changing the x-coordinate. Onto the next one, changing the x-coordinate again, but it does the opposite of what you'd expect, so adding three, four, add three is seven, and the y-coordinate again is unchanged, so seven, five. Onto this third one, negative on the outside, so it changes the y, so we're not changing the x, so that stays as a four, and y becomes negative, so it becomes minus five. And now to the last one, we've got two transformations to do. We've got to subtract two from the x-coordinate, the opposite there inside the bracket, so two. And we've got to take away one from the y-coordinate, four. Right, and on to the, the second one here. So we've got five minus two as our coordinate. So three on the outside of the bracket for part A multiplies the y-coordinate by three. So it becomes five minus six. Part B, inside the bracket, subtracting four from x. So we have one minus two. On to part C, minus x, so that's going to change the x-coordinate symbol, so minus five, minus two. And on to the last one here, two transformations, we've got dividing the x-coordinate by two and adding three to the y-coordinate. So the x-coordinate is five, divide that by two is 2.5, and then adding three to the y-coordinate sends it from minus two up to positive one, so it's 2.51. Right, let's have a look at sketching some of these. Okay, so it says the diagram shows part of a curve with equation y equals f of x. Draw a sketch of the graph with these two equations. I'm going to do two on one graph just to save a bit of time here. So part A says to draw y equals f of x minus 4. Now we know that x minus 4 here is going to plus 4 to all the y or to the x coordinates. So add 4 to x. Okay, now all we've got to do is make sure that we find any whole number coordinates on this graph, and they're the key ones. So I can see quite a few, and I'm going to highlight them here. So we've got one here, we've got one here, 
and we've got a few down the bottom here that go through actual whole number coordinates. So they are the coordinates that I need to make sure I move perfectly when I'm drawing my little sketch. The rest, we can just do it as accurately as we can. So if we're gonna add four to the X coordinate, well, let's look at this one here to start with. That coordinate there currently is zero, four. So when I add four to the X coordinate, that is gonna become four, four, okay? Adding four to the zero. So four, four is the coordinate here. And you can see there, that's moved it right four spaces, and that's what that that, actual, that transformation there actually does. Okay, so when we actually add four to the x-coordinates, they're all gonna move right four, and therefore it's gonna be translated, okay, to the right. Okay, so we're translating it four to the right. Now looking at the other one, um, this one here, if I move that four, that's gonna land on top of that naught four coordinate, so I can't draw over the top of that, but that's where that's gonna move. The one down the bottom here, this minus two, that, if we move that right four, that's gonna to go to here. And then moving the others right four is gonna place them there and there. There we go. And that is how they would move. Now if I just get rid of some of these bits here, because we're gonna do another one in a sec. Let's get rid of all of them. And let's just sketch that in. And you've gotta just do this nice and neat, okay, as best you can, drawing a nice smooth curve, making it look as best as you can, like the one on the graph there. There we go. So not perfect with my lines there, but just moving it right for and showing that it goes through those whole number coordinates. And let's have a look at part B here. We've got y equals f of minus x. Now minus x we know uh, changes the symbol on the x coordinates. So again if we pick a coordinate and let's pick this one to start with. Okay so this one here, and let's label this over here, that coordinate there is minus 2, 0. Okay, so if we swap the symbol on the x-coordinate there, that's going to become positive 2, 0. Okay, so positive 2, 0. Again, let's get rid of this first graph. Positive 2, 0 is here. There we go. So, let's have a look at another one. Um, let's pick this coordinate here. There we go. So that coordinate there is minus 1, 0. And if we change the, the symbol in front of the x coordinate, that becomes positive one zero. So positive one zero is there. And let's have a look at one more down here on the bottom. We might be able to figure out where the rest are gonna go afterwards. This one here is minus three zero. And again, swapping the x coordinate there, that becomes positive three zero, which is just here. So hopefully you can see that actually this curve is gonna end up in exactly the same place as the last one. But what's actually happening here, let's have a look, let's just get rid of all this so we can see it a bit better, is something slightly different to the last one, because that last one was a transformation, it was actually moving right for, whereas if you have a look at, and I'll try and do them in a different color here, this coordinate here, the purple one, moved to this coordinate here. So actually it's not being moved in the same way, because as well, this coordinate here has moved to this coordinate here. What this is actually doing is reflecting the shape in the y-axis. Okay, and you might actually be able to see that this coordinate here as well would move to, just make sure I do this carefully now that I'm not writing down the coordinates, it would move to there. And the coordinate which is here on the axes is not gonna move anywhere, it's gonna stay where it is. So actually what's happened is the curve has been reflected, but all, it actually all you've gotta do is reflect those or change the symbol in front of those X coordinates. And again, just sketching it in nice and neat. So it's quite unique there because, oh, there we go, not very good there. Make sure you do go through the coordinate points. But although there were two different um, transformations there, two different changes in the function, the graph did end up in the same place, but there were different transformations. One's a reflection and one was a translation. Okay, but as it turned out, they ended up in the same place for that one. But let's have a look at another one. Okay, so we've got a different curve here. We've got the diagram shows part of a curve with equation y equals f of x. Draw a sketch of the graph with these equations. So again, we've just got some slightly different ones here. We've got the first one being f of x add two. Now we know that that adds two, so plus two to y. There we go. So again, all we need to do is find these whole number coordinates. We've got one here, we've got one here, another one here, another one here. We've got quite a few on this one and another one there. So if I want to add two to all the y coordinates, let's start with this one. The y coordinate here is three. The, um, the coordinate there is three, three. So once we add three to the y coordinate, that's going to become three, six. Okay, so three, six is here. So essentially, it's just moving up three. Okay, so we can just do that quite nice and easily now for the rest of them. We can just move them all up three. 
So going from right to left, if I move this one up three, it goes to here. If I move the next one up three, it goes to here. The next one up three goes to there. And this final one up three goes to here. And again, just drawing that in as best as you can through all those whole number coordinates, replicating what the graph below looks like. And there it is, moving it up three. Okay, so nice and simple there. Once you've got your one coordinate done, you can tend to get all the rest done quite nice and easily. Let's have a look at part B. It says y equals uh, minus f of x. So it's outside the bracket, it's going to change the y coordinates. So similar to what we did in the last one, but the y coordinates are going to change. So again, if I have a look at this one just here, that currently is 3, 3, but it's going to change the y coordinate to a minus, so it's going to become 3, minus 3. And 3 minus 3 is down here okay so as you can probably see actually what's going to happen here it's going to reflect not in the y-axis this time but in the x-axis and this is what this is going to do so if you change all the y coordinates and flip the signs actually it's going to do a reflection in the y in the x-axis so if you have a look at this next coordinate that's on zero zero that's not going to change zero zero is still going to be zero zero so that stays where it is moving on to this coordinate this one's minus two two so that's going to become minus two minus two changing the y coordinate there and the next one is on the x-axis, so that's minus 4, 0, that's going to stay as minus 4, 0. And the last one here is minus 5, minus 2, and that's going to become minus 5, plus 2. That's going to go there. Right, so you've got to be a little bit careful now when you're drawing these, because it's a little bit more complicated to draw. But if I connect them all up, you can see it goes up to here, down to here, and up to there. Okay, so I'll try and get rid of that one on top. There we go, let's get rid of that one. So in this case here, that has actually done a reflection in the x-axis, and you've just got to be very careful to draw that in as best as you can, okay? So you've got a few different ones. You've got the movements or the translations, left and right and up and down, but then you've also got these ones here, so y equals minus f of x does a, what we've done here, which is a reflection in the x-axis. And you also had the one that we looked at on the last question, which is y equals f of minus x, which does the opposite there. You've got a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, but each time that you do these, really, as you know how to move the coordinates now, all you've got to do is pick those whole number coordinates and just change them as the uh, function transformation actually says to do there. Okay, so if you need to add 2 to y or take away 2 from x or change the symbol for x and y, just do that and draw them in nice and carefully and connect them up and take your time with it. Okay, so here's two for you to have a go at. Okay, so you've got two questions here. Obviously, don't expect you to actually draw these, but have a think about where they would move and, in, and how they would look. You can always draw a little sketch of them if you want. It's not too, not going to be too difficult just to do a little sketch. You won't be able to do the coordinates perfectly unless you've got some graph paper. But you could actually have a go at just thinking about what they're going to look like on the screen. Okay, so for each question, there are two parts, part A and B. So have a go, think about where they'd go, pause the video there, and we'll give the answer in a sec. Okay, so this first one. So if we have a look at this one to start with, we've got a minus four on the outside, which changes all the y coordinates. So essentially it's gonna move down four. So if we start with this bottom minimum point here, that's gonna go down four, down to minus four. And then all the rest of these whole number coordinates here, which I'll highlight, are all gonna go down four. And if I just move them all down four, that's gonna be here and here. And then those upper ones are gonna go down four, down to here and here and again I just need to try and draw a little sketch of the graph that I can see and there we go as best as you can right on to the next one we've got minus f of x so that's outside the bracket again so it's going to affect the y coordinates so, and it's going to flip the signs on them so these top ones up here which have y coordinates of 4 are going to go down to y coordinates of minus 4 negative 4 there we go the one on the axis here isn't going to change because the y coordinate is zero, but these two are going to change here. These positive one y coordinates are going to go down to negative one. There we go. And as you can see, that's done our reflection there in the x axis. Okay, so just making sure you go through all those whole number coordinates. Now, you normally wouldn't have two on top of each other like that, but so we've got a few more on the screen here. We've got two on each one. So let's have a look at the next one. We've got y equals f of x minus 3. So that's going to affect the x coordinates, and it's going to go right 3 or add 3 to all of them. So we've got a few here to move. We've got this one. We've got this one. Let's have a look. This one here, this one here, and this one here. And they are all going to go right 3. 
So starting from the right, let's move that right three, that one right three, that one right three. Let's have a look, the next one there is quite close. Right three, and where's the last one? Right three is there, there we go. And then obviously just drawing that up as best as you can with a nice smooth curve going through all those coordinates. There we go, and there's your little graph transformation there. And onto the last one, we've got minus x, so changing the x coordinates there, flipping the signs on the x coordinates. So this one here has an x coordinate of three, and that's gonna go to minus three, which is over here. We've got this one here, which is on zero, so that's not gonna change. We've got minus two here, which is gonna to go to positive two, which is gonna be there. It gets a bit messy on top of each other here. So we've got minus four, that's gonna to go to positive four. And we've got this one here, which is at minus five, and that's gonna to go to positive five. Right, that is gonna be quite difficult for me to draw on top of there. Let's think about what this is gonna look like. Okay, so as best as I can. Oh, let's start that one again. So that's gonna go up through here, down and up, and actually it extends a little bit, so we could extend it a little bit there. There we go. So it does a reflection there in the y-axis, okay? Just so just reflecting it around as best as you can, but obviously you can only do your best there with your sketches, but that hopefully gives you a general idea of what these actual graph transformations actually do to the graph. Now I've got one more for you to have a look at before we finish. Okay, so last question. We've got the curve with the equation f of x is transformed on the graph. And here's our equation f of x, so it's this graph on the left here. Write the equation of the transformed curve. Now there are so many different ones of these, but it just follows all the rules that we've just looked at before. So this actual graph here, if you have a look, f of x, the points have moved. Okay, so this point here has moved to this point here, and that has gone over to the right. Okay, having a look at this point here, it's moved to here, and again, it's gone over to the right, and the same for the last one. These two points here have moved over to the right. Now what we can actually do is use the number down the bottom for this one. Okay, we can see down here it goes from naught to four. So it has gone right four, or four has been added to the x coordinate there. Okay, let's just actually write that a bit higher, there we go. So that has added four to the x coordinate. Now if we are changing the x coordinate, that means it has to go inside the bracket, doesn't it? So we would have y equals, f of and in the bracket x and to move right four or plus four we have to write the opposite so it would be minus four there we go and that would be the equation of this curve on the right and there's obviously so many different ones that you could do here but all you need to make sure you do on a question like this is find the coordinates see what's happened to them and obviously just relate that and correspond it back to our little table there. Has the x coordinate changed, in which case it's in the bracket? Have the y coordinates changed, in which case they're gonna be outside the bracket, okay? The only one you need to be careful of is when it's a reflection, just making sure that you are careful there because it's a little bit of an opposite, isn't it? When it's inside the bracket, a minus inside the bracket does a reflection in the y-axis, and a minus outside the bracket does a reflection in the x-axis, but it changes the corresponding coordinates. So inside the bracket with a minus changes the x-coordinates, which does a reflection in y, and outside the bracket changes the y-coordinates, but ends up doing a reflection in x. But there is just one little question there to be thinking about and how you would apply this. Okay, if you did have to write the equation uh, of the transformed curve or graph or whatever it is that you have to do. But there we go, a bit of an overview on transformation of graphs. Um, hopefully you found that useful. If it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.